The Papal Visit, 1982. This year, Pope John Paul II was due to visit Britain. This was to be the first time in 400 years. Very few people saw the significance of this, and I felt the need to inform people about such an event. I wrote to the Burton Church, which met on the 16th of January 1982. This was 14 years to the day of my conversion. Asking if we could invite a member of the British Council of Protestant Churches to use the Beaton Chapel to meet and to teach clear biblical principles as to how we should act responsibly and maintain a godly witness in the present time. I suggested it would be helpful to many churches in the area. Mrs E expressed the Beaton Chapel was not the place to hold such a meeting, but some other place, such as like the village hall. Mr King said they had Roman Catholic friends and would not wish to offend them. From this time, I began to wonder about the church at Beaton and believed I would see the hand of God out against her. I remembered, they that honour me, I will honour. I held the meeting in my house and invited several people from different churches and Reverend Gordon Ferguson came and preached to us. Just a few minutes walk from their Beaton Chapel is our home, 187 Aylesbury Road. We eventually was able to buy a property in Beaton. It was a detached bungalow just down the road from the Beaton strict and particular Baptist chapel. I felt really blessed by God to own it and being so near to the chapel. A spanking from the pulpit, Isaac deserved it. I was very conscious of the instruction that I was responsible to God for the discipline of my children and knew the scriptures which speak of spoiling children through lack of discipline, and the exhortation that if I spare the rod of correction, I would spoil the child. The other scripture which spoke to me was of how a good father ought to rule his house well, and his children being obedient and subject to him. That if he did not know how to rule his own house well, how should he be able to rule and care for the church of God? I believe the scripture spoke clearly about corporal punishment, and it was a must. Proverbs 29 verse 15 and Proverbs 23 verse 13. The first occasion I felt the need to exercise corporal punishment was on Isaac when he was very small. As I write this now, I smile and I'm sure he would do too. I think he needs corporal punishment now at the age of 20. Isaac had done something which warranted correction. I felt on this occasion I would use the rod of correction. It was a small, thin garden cane, a green one. I made him stand away from me, and I said it will hurt me more than it's going to hurt you to have to correct him like this. He was four years old. I smacked his bottom with the cane, and he jumped and couldn't say a word for a few minutes. Then he burst into tears, saying, Daddy, that stings! From that day forward, the cane was called the stinging stick. That was not the last time the stinging stick was used. On another occasion, I was preaching at the Beaton Chapel, and Isaac and Esther were sitting on them with their mum on the back row of the chapel. During the sermon, Isaac was playing with his mum, and he would not sit still and kept messing about. His behaviour was unacceptable. I was gradually becoming cross with him until I felt I must do something about it. I stopped speaking and said to the congregation, Excuse me. I climbed down the pulpit steps went to the back of the chapel, I picked Isaac up and took him outside of the chapel and informed him I was displeased with his behaviour and gave him three smacks on his bottom. With this he burst into tears and when he stopped I took him back into the chapel and placed him beside his mum. I then went back into the pulpit and apologised for the interruption and proceeded with the sermon as though nothing had happened. I heard afterwards the spanking was heard throughout the chapel and a couple of the ladies were horrified at what I had done, but they said nothing to me. I felt I'd done the right thing, using the rod of correction to drive foolishness from the child. Proverb 22, verse 15. Is corporal punishment what Jesus wants? Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Proverb 10:12. A rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Proverbs 10 verse 13, a rod is for the back of him that's void of understanding. Proverbs 13 24, he that spareth the rod hateth his son, he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. 
Proverbs 19.18 Chasten thy son whilst there is hope, spare not for his crying. Proverbs 19.29 Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. Proverbs 19.30 The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so doth stripes the inward parts of the belly. Proverbs 22.15 Foolishness is bound up in the heart of the child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Proverbs 22 Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he will not die. Proverbs 29.15 The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. I answer, yes. Preaching the Gospel In a very short period of time, I was engaged to preach at the following strict Baptist chapel throughout the country. The various chapels I preached in are as follows. Reading Hope Chapel, Oxford Hope Chapel, Wantage Strip Baptist Chapel, Stamford Strip Baptist Chapel, Oakington Strip Baptist Chapel, Horsham Strip Baptist, Fenstanton Strip Baptist, Romford Room Strip Baptist, Matfield Strip Baptist, Eaton Bray Strip Baptist, Walgrave Strip Baptist, Bradford Strip Baptist, Beaches Road Strip Baptist, Evington Strip Baptist, Leicester Zion Strip Baptist, Nottingham Strip Baptist, Newbill Baptist, Winslow Baptist, Blackheath Strict and Particular Baptist, Attleborough Strict and Particular Baptists. In fact, I was so overwhelmed with being asked to preach at so many places, I could have been preaching three times on a Sunday every week of the year and during the week on weekday services. This was on top of my full-time work, which involved teaching two nights a week at Luton College, as well as continuing my studies with the Open University.